Derek Chisora stops David Price in four rounds. Chisora came out and tried to steamroll Price from the opening bell. He was moving his head well. He managed to pin Price on the ropes quite easily. He was firing off those big overhand rights, left hooks, body shots. Price, to his credit, kept his composure. To me, he didn't look panicked, at least not in the first couple rounds. And I was wondering, because of Derek Chisora's weight, you know, he weighed 260 pounds in this fight. I think that was a career heaviest for Derek Chisora. I believe it was. Actually, he's weighed 260 before against Nascimento several years ago. But a joint heaviest of his career, 260. And the way the first couple rounds went, Pricey was under pressure, but he wasn't getting hit with anything really hurtful or clean. And he still looked quite relaxed. And I was wondering, how long can Derek Chisora keep this pressure up for? Either he's going to catch Pricey with something and be able to stop him, or Pricey's going to keep blocking the shots and defending against them, and maybe Chisora's going to tire at 260 pounds, and maybe we'll see Pricey come into the fight later on. And perhaps that's what Pricey was hoping for. But it wasn't to be, because of course at the end of the third round, Chisora got Pricey along the ropes, uh, delivered some heavy shots. Pricey was in serious trouble on very shaky legs, although right at the moment where it looked like Pricey might get dropped, right close to the bell, he landed an uppercut on Derek Chisora, and Chisora looked wobbly, and he went back to his corner on unsteady legs. So Pricey always got that punching power. But they came out for the fourth round, and it was kind of a strange stoppage because... I seem to remember Pricey actually having Chisora up against the ropes, but Chisora landed some very short punches, which looked fairly innocuous on the inside, and Pricey's legs just started wobbling all over the place. He looked like he was doing the river dance at one point. His legs were so, uh, you know, here, there, and everywhere. And then Chisora managed to catch him with a shot behind the ear, almost on the back of the head. In fact, it might have been on the back of the head. Pricey said that it was in at one of the post-fight interviews. But the damage had already been done. Down price he went on his hands and knees. He got up to his feet and it didn't look good because price has been in that situation before where he's been badly discombobulated. And when he gets back up, he's in serious trouble. His corner sensed that and they threw in the towel rather than see Pricey get knocked out very badly. Personally, I think it was a good decision because we know that Pricey's been cleaned out several times and it's not healthy to have that happen to him again and again. You can end up with CTE. So, And that's why Audley Harrison eventually had his boxing license in the UK revoked because I believe it was CTE he was diagnosed with or something very similar. So yeah, Chisora manages to get him out of there. There was a little scare there at the end of the third round for Chisora, when he got wobbled with the uppercut. But for the most part, even though Pricey was hanging in there and trying to throw punches back, it was all Derek Chisora, or War Chisora as he calls himself. Now, over the years, I've seen a lot of people, particularly, you know, after, before Pricey had lost his first fight, I could understand people saying, Pricey needs to do this, Pricey needs to do that. And even after he'd lost a couple, But Pricey's lost how many times now? Seven times? Six or seven times? At at this point in his career, I do find it a little naive of people to be saying, Pricey should be doing this and Pricey should be doing that and Pricey should be doing the other. If Pricey could do those things, he would be doing them. The reason that Pricey ain't keeping people on the end of a ramrod jab and not letting them get close is because he can't. Chisora was moving his head, so Pricey couldn't land the jab. A guy as big as David Price, and, you know, different fighters of that size are not all equally talented, but David Price, he doesn't have the coordination to be able to, you know, stick a guy on the end of a ramrod jab who's moving his head. He just doesn't have the coordination for it. He doesn't have the correct and necessary body mechanics to fight just like a Vladimir Klitschko. He doesn't have it. He might want to do it in his head. He might imagine 
how it's supposed to be done, but he, his body cannot physically carry out, out those actions to that standard. Can't do it. David Price reached his level a long time ago. I think the Dave Allen fight showed, well, he was several levels above Dave Allen, but he's around, you know, the British level. That's where he's at. Maybe if you've got a weaker European champion, he might be able to step up one day and win a European belt. And of course, he's always got world-class punching power, but David Price is what he is. You're not going to, at this stage of his career, develop a Klitschko-type jab or anything like that. No, it's not going to happen. So all those people saying Price, he should do, do this and Price, he should do that. In my view, you're a bit naive. He can't do it. <laughs> That's why he's not doing it. I think that Pricey, from a mental point of view, is probably stronger now than he's ever been. Yes, he took this fight on short notice, but I didn't see, because some people have said that they this is what they did see, but I didn't see Pricey look, uh, you know, out of his comfort zone too much mentally. To me, he, he understood, even before the fight, he said he knows Chisora is going to be able to get close to him. That's what Chisora does. He gets close to people. Pricey is a very big guy, over 260 pounds. You know, he's a bit clunky and cumbersome. He doesn't have the quickest reflexes. That's another thing people have to factor in when they expect Pricey to do this, that, and the other. He doesn't have the reflexes to be able to do a lot of the things that people say he should be doing. He doesn't have the reflexes of a clitch goal or something. He just doesn't have it. Um, the, or the flexibility. So... To me, he boxed as well as he could box at this particular weight. But Chisora was just the better man. You know, Chisora's head movement, his punch selection, his aggression, uh, put Price under pressure, trapped him on the ropes and just wailed away with those big heavy shots. And it was what it was. So onwards and upwards for Derek Chisora. Pricey, I don't know where he goes from here. Will he carry on? Uh, we'll see. But he needs to obviously drop down a couple levels. And if he manages to get an opportunity like this again, he cannot take it at short notice because Price has been taking these kind of fights at short notice for a while now. He said he wouldn't do it, remember? In interviews prior to signing for the Chisora fight, he said, oh, I'm not taking no more short notice uh, fights. Well, he needs to stick to that. <laughs> yeah, uh, obviously he's looking at the short term money and opportunity and oh I sparred Chisora back in the days and I did well well it ain't back in the days anymore Chisora's improved a lot since then and Pricey's taken some heavy knockout defeats so as far as Chisora goes I like the fact that he's one of the few pressure fighters full on you know absolute pressure fighters in the heavyweight division because there are not many of them Povetkin He's a pressure fighter, and he's a good one, but he's really up there in age. Andy Ruiz, he is a he's a subtle pressure fighter, but he's more of a front foot counter puncher. You know, he's not like an out and out attack, attack, attack pressure fighter. Uh, and who else do you have? Jarrell Miller, he's a pressure fighter. Um, Kalnaki, there are a few to be fair, <laughs> just to contradict myself a little bit. Uh, yeah, there are a, a couple, but. Chisora really wings heavy power shots over the top when he gets close to you. <laughs> That's his style. I think Chisora is hitting harder right now than he ever has before. But how many rounds can he sustain that kind of pace slinging over those big shots? I like the head movement and all that kind of stuff that he had in this fight. But if he goes in there against a Joseph Parker... I still think it's a very interesting fight. I love to see it. But I do wonder if he can sustain that kind of pace throwing those big heavy shots. Or maybe he wouldn't try to bulldoze Parker the way he did Pricey. Maybe he understood what he was in there with against Pricey uh, and knew that it was just a matter of time. But against Parker, Parker's going to be moving a lot more. It's going to be more difficult for Derek to set himself. Derek really needs to come in lighter if he's to fight Joseph Parker, in my view. Or if he's to fight... Alexander Usyk. So we'll see how that goes. Chisora himself, after the fight, there was obviously mention of Usyk, who he's mentioned before. Also mention of Parker, if they can reschedule that. 
but he says he wants Jarrell Miller in Saudi Arabia on the AJ Ruiz undercard. Eddie Hearn said that's unrealistic. Um, Apparently, Derek Chisora has been going back and forth on social media with Big Baby. It's a fight I'd like to see. Big Baby is, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what he's like without PEDs in his system. Does he have the same strength? Does he have the same work rate? Will he be able to push Chisora back? Because he's a very, very physically strong man. Jarrell Miller. He might be able to push Chisora back. We saw Carlos Takam was able to do it. And if Chisora is on the back foot, yes, he can still be dangerous. You know, we should, we should have seen that from the Takam fight. But I don't know, man. Chisora Miller is a good fight. It's a fight I like. <laughs> Would Chisora be willing to take that in the United States? Would Jarrell Miller fight Chisora in the UK? I know Chisora is talking about having it in Saudi Arabia, but, you know, stranger things have happened in boxing, but Eddie Hearn seems to have shut that down right away. Uh, but if he is focused on the Miller fight, and Chisora's kind of a very determined, stubborn character, so if if he feels like he's got a grudge to settle with that guy, then maybe that's the direction he's going to go in. So, I don't know. I think Derek Chisora's career at the moment is fun. I'm not sure how far he can go, but I'm going to enjoy the journey because he is a guy who I've written off at least a couple times in the past. I thought he was done after that Cabayel defeat I was like this this guy's done I mean he just seemed totally disinterested and even after the Kubrat Pulev defeat I just thought well, you know surely he can't resurrect himself again but he has <laughs> he hooked up with David Hay and obviously the opponents he's beaten at the moment are not world beaters he beat a uh, faded Arthur Spilka and he's beat David Price so, you know, we're not talking about top 10 heavyweights at the moment. But can he beat a top 10 heavyweight? We'll see, man. I think the Joseph Parker fight is a good one for him. If I was managing Chisora, I'm obviously not, I would go for the Parker fight or the Miller fight. I wouldn't go for the Usek fight. I agree with Johnny Nelson on that because Johnny Nelson is saying he shouldn't fight Usek. I don't, I don't think he should. I think that David Hay and Chisora... Uh, I mean, maybe they see something, right? They're both professionals and whatnot, been in the game a long time. Maybe they see something. But personally, nah, I don't like that fight for Derek Chisora. I think Usek can move too well for him. Chisora is very heavy at this point in his career. Nah, I'll go for the, the, the Parker because Parker can be roughed up. We know that. We saw that against Dylan White. And Jarrell Miller, he's right there in front of you. He's not going to move nowhere. So, yeah, those are the fights I target. If I was uh, managing Chisora. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Was it the fight you expected? Uh, you know, how far can Derek Chisora go? Do you think he'll ever fight for a world title again? He did against Vitaly Klitschko. Very early on in his career. And before the final curtain, will he manage to do it again? Let me know what you guys think. It's happening. I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week covering a wide variety of controversial topics as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.